good coffee. <laughs> but I won't take the madness away in this video. Welcome back, my dear resin monkeys. It's been a hot minute since we last saw each other. There's a lot of exciting information that I need to give you guys, so be sure to stay for the totality if you want of this video. Firstly, I want to say that I was very surprised that I was recognized at Anime Expo by not one, not two, but a whole bunch of you over there. A lot of you came up to say hi and a lot more asked for pictures with me and honestly, I don't know if I should be happy or concerned that I am now a very recognizable person in these events. But anyway, I was extremely happy to meet all of my resin monkeys out there in the wild. And I hope to meet even more of you out there in future events. My AX experience was extremely enjoyable because of this, and all the horrible body odor that I came across became just an afterthought. Of course not, what the fuck are you people doing? Do you know what soap is? Should I send you some? Secondly, I want to thank each and every one of you that stayed and watched my last video. I was extremely anxious to the type of reception it would receive, but your overwhelming support brought me to tears. I read all your comments, I read all your tweets, all your DMs, everything. I felt really bad to not be able to reply to each one of them, but trust me, if you said something, I 100% read it. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I think I, I will go ahead and making more story time videos going forward, uh, just sprinkled on here and there uh, so that it won't derail that much from the usual topic that is you, just me, watching me suffer uh, a painting a figure. Thirdly, I usually don't plug my Patreon this early in the video, but I think I need to do it because, okay, before I say why, uh, I need all you little pearl clutchers to skip to this timestamp in the video because I don't want to read your annoying little comments because you weren't warned or because, oh my god, why? Okay. They gone? All right. This is for my very thirsty Sailor Moon fans out there. In a desert full of grotesque and exaggerated NSFW figures filled with unrealistic tatas and schlongs with gross bodily fluids and ahigao faces. Mostly for a male audience. I come to quench your thirst in the form of an oasis in this desert full of erotically beautiful NSFW couple figures. Yes, my dear Moonies, this resin queen has embarked on a brand new adventure to produce the unproduced. That's right, the first ever adult Sailor Moon figure set. Something that nobody has ever done. Unless you count Oshinji's, but that was a long time ago and long forgotten by time. A tasteful erotic figure set of our favorite couple. You heard right, a group of female artists are teaming up with me to make something you never thought you wanted. Something only for the female gaze. If studios are producing their own unlicensed NSFW figures of popular shonen characters, I can produce my own. Unfortunately, due to the nature of this project, I won't be able to post anything on YouTube, but if you're interested in this production, you can head on over to my Patreon. You can join and get all the information regarding this project. I will be posting censored updates on all my socials because, you know, I can't do that. That way I can keep you guys in the loop if you're interested. Or if you're just nosy and you're not really interested but you want to see what, what comes out of this. This figure set will be ready for pre-order once it's ready down the line. And this will be via Patreon and via my website. Although patrons will get priority over the orders and also get a special gift. But nonetheless, you will be able to see uncensored project pictures and updates on Patreon. And once it's done, you'll be able to see all that on my website. But in the meantime, only patrons get first dibs. 
and all the juicy, juicy little progress bits that I'm gonna give you guys. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get to the nitty gritty of this project. This model was done by Sam, who is my BFF uh, from Emerald Angel Studios. And when she showed it to me, I goddamn screamed like a little girl. Why? Because this figure is based on the very first manga illustration I saw of Sailor Moon. If you watch my last video, you would understand why Sailor Moon means so much to me. And during those times where I would buy these little comic books from the anime, the manga started to be published here in Mexico. I didn't know what she looked like in manga form. And let me tell you that when I was told that there was a brand new comic book that someone saw that looked different than the anime, I ran to the nearest magazine booth in downtown. And after a good 30 minutes of searching, there she was. The first issue of Nixine with Sailor Moon Super S chapter one why chapter one heck i don't know that's probably what the publisher was able to get at that time but this this came out in the year 2000 but i can definitely tell you that this was the only time in my life where i felt my actual pupils dilating as soon as my sight was set on this cover those piercing blue eyes looking back at me was the most beautiful thing i've ever seen up to that point in my life it became a core memory. So this figure holds a ton of sentimental value. Sam originally gifted me this model about a couple years ago for my birthday, but it wasn't until now that it was refined and polished. So let's see what her process was like. And a lot of the time overall, I was kind of still in the middle of collecting references of scenes or pieces that Melko has done. That inspired me to do that illustration in particular. No one has really done a sculpt to that reference before, but overall, I figure it would be a good challenge. So I think with that being said, the, I was currently working on a few soggy projects. Some of them I kind of dumped, some of them I kept, you know, just on the back burner. Maybe I'll come back to it later make something out of it. But since I had a lot of working files to those earlier sculpts, I figured I could reuse some of those elements to be able to build this bus quicker, but not really focusing too much about anatomy and stuff. Just, just kind of like a rough block layout, what it would look like. Because at that same time, I was still new to Blender and using different tools and how to be more efficient in my workflow. One thing I wanted to like really improve on was sculpting hair. Usagi is somewhat easy in some aspects, but there's also a lot of challenges for splitting parts and things like that. For sure, this uh, illustration had its uh, very interesting turns for a uh, crazy noodle hair lady. I did go back and forth between the file over the last couple of years. Uh, sometimes I'll go back in and fiddle with it a little bit, and then sometimes I'll leave it alone, maybe for like a month or two or something like that. But I think with the backup files that I had, I would say a rough estimate, it took about two years for everything to come to fruition. But before I sent my design files to Onesie Studio, it took, I believe, about a year total of designing and then a tab logger, uh, sending files back and forth to Onesie, you know, before they took over the project to make the piece more uh, production worthy level to produce. That's more or like including like uh, tweaking the design overall, cutting parts they fit right, adding connection pegs, thickening parts to prevent less breakages and so on and so forth. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I would easily have to answer the hair. The freaking hair was the most difficult part about this whole thing. But again, I chose this project because I knew this was going to be a pain in my ass. But moreover, like people kind of like tend to forget that when you're designing something from a 2D aspect to a 3D, uh, you have to consider like all the angles. I mean, like literally like front, side, above, down, and then 45 and all this other shit. That was very interesting, that's for sure. But as far as how I tackled it, I think it was more of a, like, obviously you start off simple. You don't want to go too full in detail about certain things. So starting off simple, like from what I can recall, like the front view, I would do like draw literally noodles, like 
it's it's kind of hard to explain, but it's it's more of her like doing various thicknesses of noodles for her hair. Like, hey, you know, this kind of looks right as far as size wise for these noodle strands kind of thing from the front view. But my God, when I turn the model, I'm like, how am I going to make this make sense? Because if you can tell by no goes work, the hair can be very random and don't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> So moreover, once I had the front piece figured out, then, you know, I turned the model to the side and to the back. The back didn't have to worry about too much of the side angles I had to work on. Once the flow made more sense, then I started adding more details and then adjusted them more and adding more details, adjusting them more. Then I went ahead and then checked aerial angles to see how those thick and thin pieces kind of worked. And then overall, once I was sending my files back and forth with, with Wan Z, thickening some of the hair pieces even more for production standards again, like before, and then they were able to take over everything to be able to make it even what it is today. I think overall it's being able to create something digital and literally like I have a bunch of printers over here but it's just being able to watch this be able to turn into something that's 3D layer by layer by layer is just like a mind modeling experience that I never thought I would feel before. It's one thing to sculpt with your hands and stuff, but there's a lot of benefits to, you know, 3D sculpting to be able to correct things a lot easier and not really more of a wasting time, but it, def it definitely saves time. But it saves material costs, especially. Especially with my experience, I do make a lot of mistakes and doing things in 3D definitely cuts down the time for that. But the fact that you can be able to make something for either for yourself or be able to produce it and give it, you know, to people that even probably long before I'm gone, you know, that it's going to be in someone's collection or be passed down or whichever. Don't know if that would happen, but just that, that idea. So many garage kits from back in the 80s and 90s are carried over a up until today and it's just a, a really cool feeling i never thought i would be able to be able to feel again so for once actually feeling happy <laughs> about making something you know but it's a cool experience now i'm sure you're asking yourself right now is this for sale and let me tell you yes sam and onesie studios are teaming up and collaborating to produce the painted and unpainted version of this figure. There are only a few copies left for each because the pre-orders have been open for a while, so they are almost gone. So if you'd like one, be sure to check out my description box below because everything is there. See, this is what happens when you don't follow me on my socials. I plastered it all over the place and I don't want to hear your whining because you missed out on it. Because this is the one in non production, so if you don't catch it right now, you're never going to catch it later. I am happy to be part of this collab by being the first one to print and paint this prototype and basically show you guys how it will look like. But I need to preface that my version will not be at all like the pre-painted version that Onesie Studios will offer. Their version will take after the coloring from the original illustration. So basically, don't expect your pre-painted copy to look like mine. Just know that I'm printing this prototype to scale as to what you will receive and also along with its clear and regular resin parts. But again, mine will be special because BFF privileges. And I can do whatever I want with my copy. So enough to chit, let's get this started. Now, in order to kickstart this project, Ilagu came to the rescue and offered to provide our most important tool, which is the Saturn 8K a much bigger printer than the previous Mars 3 they sent. So that will allow me to print larger parts. And since this kit is a 1 4th scale, it couldn't have come at a better time. The printer comes with a very nice carbon filter to help with the fumes while printing, as well as your usual toolbox to help you set it up. The build plate is huge and it has a 10 inch LCD screen. I'm getting the hang of 3D printing now, and I've come to realize that in order to reduce failures, you need to properly level your plate after maybe five or six consecutive print sessions. So I make sure to do that before and after I calibrate it to start printing.
Ilangu also sent their 8K resin, which was what I originally going to use for a different project. But since this kit will be painted in very bright colors, I decided to use the plant-based resin, which is white, to avoid affecting the tones. Because believe it or not, no matter how many coats of white you apply to a dark surface, it will never be enough and your colors will look darker. So white resin it is. Once that was done, I opened up the files that Onesie and Sam sent me. I hollowed them out and started to print. I always try to get as few visible print lines on my pieces and I use a 0.02 millimeter layer print. Here are my settings if you're curious, but please understand that I printed at a constant 22 degrees Celsius temperature and I also live in a somewhat desert area so it was very dry. These print settings might not work the same way in other geographical locations unfortunately. After a few days of printing, the model was finished and I was pleasantly surprised at how well the results were. Barely any print lines were visible. In every print video I see, everybody always focuses on how much texture or how many minis can come out and that is not useful to me as someone wanting to buy a printer for the purposes of printing a 3D anime figure where the last thing that many of these have is texture and are small. So I can definitely say that if you want to print models like these, the Saturn 8K provides great results. And always be sure to clean your hollowed out parts on the inside as well to avoid leaving any uncured resin in there. The logo right now is having a printer giveaway. So if you don't have the financial means to purchase one right now, this is your chance to try and win your very own printer. All the info will be posted down in the description box below. Once printing was finished, I excitedly proceeded to test fit the parts, only to realize that 90% of them didn't fit together. At first I thought it was me, maybe I didn't calibrate my printer correctly. So I recalibrated it and reprinted the model only to still have the same issues. Time was upon me because of the deadline I had placed on this project. So I started to sand down all the connections and during this time I spoke to Sam and Wanzi. We came to the realization that somewhere down the line, the model was not entirely refined when it was cut. So there was overlap between some of the connecting parts. I was glad I wasn't gaslighting myself at that moment because of this but I realized that I would have to remake basically every connection and this turned into hours of sanding and grinding. So I just stopped recording altogether because this was going to take a while. Oh yeah, I, I think this is the part where you expect me to shit on the sculptor for doing a shitty job. Uh, no, I won't do that here. Because this is what happens when you rush things. This video was supposed to come out June 30th, just in time for Uzagi's birthday, but this model still needed some refining. Some details were overlooked and this is what I have to work with. Hence why this video took way longer to upload. So no, the team will get a pass from me this time. Plus what kind of a person would I be if I shit on my best friend? Yes, I would be that person. I am that ass. You don't do that in public. You do it in private and you really run into them. <laughs> Love you, Sam. <laughs> Although this is still a nightmare. And as I was trying to connect the bangs to the head. Yeah, it goddamn broke. But as the immortal Bob Ross once said, this was a happy accident because it was a clean break and I could just putty it separately into pieces and finally connect them to the head without any issues. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of them.
Okay, with all the connections grinded and sanded down, I can now proceed with making completely new ones with some forbidden yellow mustard. This will also help to seal off the entirety of the hollowed part because I will later down the line fill them up with regular resin and make them solid. Always making sure to apply Vaseline on one side and putty on the other. And when it's hardened, just clean the Vaseline off with some alcohol. Once the potty part was done, I started to fill the pieces with Smoothcast 305. In my last few videos, some of you were concerned because I don't use glove when doing this and I get it. However, I don't particularly use them because 1. I forget and 2. Because it doesn't really irritate my hands, but uh, do as I say and not as I do if you're doing this very much use gloves. Unfortunately, working with printed resin is a pain in the ass because it's super hard and somewhat brittle, particularly when you drill through it. But I think remaking the connection parts was decent. Not perfect by any means because there were so many issues with the files. But I did what I could given the time and the circumstances. I left the hair for last because honestly, I need to prepare myself to work with crazy noodle hair lady and I needed a small break from this insanity. The next day I came back and applied a light layer of primer to everything so I can sand off print imperfections of leftover print support stubs. But it's only when you apply the primer that you really see that there were issues with the print. Mainly these stair-like parts. This happened because of inadequate supports. So I did a shit job at it and now I have to pay for my fuckery. So time for another session of sanding and grinding. Also, never be afraid to sand off clear resin. Even though it turns foggy, all you need to do is make sure to finish with a 700 or 800 grit and apply a coat of gloss sealer and you'll get your clear effect back. Now it's time to actually pin the parts, which are not that many, but I realized that the shoulder feathers had a large gap between them. And just like I did with Lady Amalthea, I'll take some thick UV resin and use it as a substitute for putty to close that gap. making sure to level the area out, curing again, and then proceeding to send off the excess. And bada bing bada boom, we evanesco that gap away. <laughs> no, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I just thought it was a fun way to say that the cap disappeared. Sue me. Rinse and repeat for the other one. And now it was time to take on the noodle hair. Surprisingly enough, all the parts did connect without issues to each other, but there was still some very thin parts that needed to be thickened to avoid breaking. But then I noticed that there was a very small part that I couldn't figure out how to connect to 
to it, only to realize that this one piece was overlooked when they split the model, and it was left without making a connection peg for it. So... I had to make one for it. With a little bit of patience and a little bit of putty, anything is possible. Including but not limited to continuing to lose your sanity. Now it was just a matter of pinning the main hair to the head by drilling through it for an accurate alignment. Only to try and glue the pin to the hair and not realizing that it came out the other way and all over my fingers. Um, yeah, be careful. This is how fingers get glued together. So uh, make sure to separate them as soon as you feel something hot. Don't worry, it does come off with hot soapy water after a while. First Odango hair done, let's move to the second one. With the pinning done, <laughs> there's some more strands that were supposed to connect to the body, but since the files were not right, well, those little strands are not even close to connecting. And I'm just going to remove them and fill the tiny holes because they're not really needed. Finally, we can start painting, or so I thought, because as I was applying the next coat of primer, I saw that I missed a shit ton of areas with that stair-like surface and also scratches I left from grinding. So going back, re-sand, redo, you goddamn twat waffle. Okay, now we can start painting. We begin by applying that gloss coat I mentioned earlier to recover that clear effect. Another final coat of primer and a layer of white to get full coverage, and I can now start to add color. This time I'm actually aiming for pastel colors for this bust. So the tones will be slightly lighter. I'm gonna use Lashivas Blonde as a base and I thought I was going to be able to use this maca color, but when I applied the first bit of color on it, it looked kinda green. So I threw it out and just used regular yellow but with a bit of white mixed into it to make it lighter. Thank you. 
And to finish off the pastel tones, I added a layer of clear white to bring everything down just a notch to achieve the color I want. You know me, I can't be basic. I always need to be extra with my kids. And I'm adding some holographic sparkles to her brooches and her shoulder feathers because magical girl. Now the manga version of her sailor collar has a gradient of blue, green, and yellow. And while you think you need all three, you just need two, which is blue and yellow. Because color theory is a thing and it's amazing when using clear paints to achieve that effect. I'm going to be using Modo's Skin Tone Set to bring her to life. I've been getting questions on where to get these paints because apparently they're sold out everywhere, but I did find them on eBay, so be sure to check it out there. Now it's time to add pastels to sharpen those shadows a bit more. I always like to shade the white fukus instead of just airbrushing them because I have more control over where and how much color I add to each area. Hence why you always see me do this in most of my kits. Once that was finished, I like to use pearl white over them to tone them down and blend them a bit more. Plus, I love how a pearl finish looks like on them because once I add a satin sealer over it, it kills most of the shine, but it still makes it look like silk. I never like a figure to be fully on glossy unless it's on specific areas. It reminds me so much of old cheap 90s toys that look like that and I avoid doing it to my kids. I'd rather use gloss, satin, and matte on different parts to give it a more lifelike finish to it. What I love about this bust is that it has minimal masking needed. So no masking hill for me today. No siree. Fuck off with that shit. I've had enough madness with remaking those connections this time around. Let's finish painting this little lady.
Now, I pride myself in having a good memory. So I thought I remembered that the choker was red and I painted it that way, only to realize that it was actually yellow and I, I had to go back and repaint it with the right color. Hey, you can't blame me for thinking that it was a red choker, okay? The other iterations of Herfuku had red chokers. This one conveniently had a yellow choker. It could have happened to anybody. I said I'm a professional. I never said I had perfect memory. You judgmental little prick. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, let's finish off her little stand with some gold marble-like accents. I'm just going to stencil that in with some crumbled up plastic wrap and, 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 it, and it does the job. There, there's no science to this. It's just crumbled up plastic wrap. Now, please enjoy a full minute of satisfying unmasking peel prawn. painted the sailor color with enamel paints over lacquer so it's going to be really easy to just wipe away the color over the stripes to avoid masking them which was indeed easy but still a little time consuming so i don't know if this defeated the purpose but oh well live and learned i haven't really used enamels until now for these types of applications so maybe it does have a learning curve and i'm just an idiot And just to clean up a bit more, I'm going over the stripes with more white to try and get a better finish on them. Pastel the small bits of her gloves. I'm applying chrome silver to the back of the brooches so that they look like gems once they're on her. I didn't want to mask the tiny heart on her choker. Instead, I went with some pink hollow powder because I'm lazy. Uh, but you could also say that this is working smarter and not harder, so take that as you like. Her feathers need to be a little extra. I bought a poster with Naoko's recent work and I noticed that she made her little feathers look like pink pearls. And that's what I'm going to emulate for her. It's really very pretty. I'm obsessed with this shine. So pretty, really. Sorry, I had to. And let's finish this off by painting her eyes. I'm going to be experimenting with a different method this time. I normally paint my eyes with acrylics as you've seen in all of my videos. But this time, I'm trying out the enamel over lacquer technique that you've probably seen other modelers use. I've never used them before because getting Tamiya enamel paints was close to impossible. But I had an amazing fan and follower do me a huge favor in actually getting them in Japan and contrib I mean ship them to me so that I can finally try this out. So thank you so much, Brandon. You're the real MVP here. 
Before you ask, yes, I will be doing a video tutorial later down the line on how to paint eyes with the enamel over lacquer method. Because I honestly don't want this to turn into the thousand and one same questions I get from the forbidden yellow mustard then turned into how to do those eyes. Because that will be the last time that I spoon feed information to you little bastards. As always, I want to take this opportunity to thank my amazing patrons for their undying support, and in particular to Agent Ayu, Tyre, Stephanie, Sky K, Bengenthal Lokson, Ed Democles, Bizbot, Sean Kirkpatrick, Elizabeth Romero, Keo, Muffin and Zeko, Nastin, KitKat, Jasa05, Gabrielle Johansson, Kimberly M. Sheldon, Meow Mix Cat, Madison Rivera, Indigo Mar, Sugar Miller, Noko, K. Almir, Neuramus, Damus, Janet, Aisha Lee, Grim Thanatos, Alexandra Matheny, Mac or Mac Stout, Fiore Lily, Euphemism, Sage Rosado, Mandy Gordon, S.K. Lamfer, Mix Scrabble, Walnutty, Rini B, Yas Queen, Kiki, Allison Metallium, Oixis, Chaos Kitty, Evelyn Cole, Pika Chica, Brandy Hicks, Blah, Ishmi, Katsy, Bacon D Eggs, I Muse, and Shiseido Lani. And to close everything off, I painted her earrings with the same hollow powder as her choker, just in yellow, and I had to go back and repaint her tiara to match her with them because we need consistency. All right, my resin monkeys, I hope you enjoyed this process. This is what actually goes into producing a garage kit. Just as you saw with my Lady Amalfia figures, this type of project requires a lot of time, effort, patience, and money. It's not something quick that just happens on a whim. No, it takes a lot of time. I also want to reiterate that while this prototype had a lot of issues <laughs> with the connections and the hair, please rest assured that the model has been refined and corrected before production so that you won't have to deal with this with your own copy. All the connections will fit together nicely and the quality will be just as nice as the rest of his productions. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should head on over to my Senshi Princess videos. Also, I cannot stress this enough, 
please do not ask for the digital files. They are not for sale and it's rude to ask if it's not offered to you. 3D printing in these productions is a tool that's not always available for the general public. So please refrain from asking and don't look like an asshole when you've already been told no. And before you guys go, I just want you to know that I will be attending Sabaton Con in Phoenix, Arizona from September 1st through the 5th and I will be attending as a special guest. I will be giving a hands-on GK workshop. So if you're at the event and you want to try your hand at painting your very first garage kit, come on over and say hi. And if you're not interested, still come on over and say hi. I would love to meet more of you over there. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you actually subscribe to my channel. I know a lot of you don't like it and I understand that, but it does help me a lot. And I would really, really appreciate it as a form of support along with your comments and likes on my videos. That way the algorithm pushes my content out there to more people that might be interested in watching. Plus it's free and you get a permanent bookmark on my channel. You can see, everybody wins. Until next time, my resin monkeys. <laughs> Don't rush things like an idiot.